Hey, witches! Hi, hello. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we are learning more about history. History. We're doing another witch trial. Like I said last time, we are working through Witchcraft, A History in 13 Trials by Marion Gibson. <laughs> um, honestly, if you want to delve more into this, this book is a really interesting read. It's funny and it's like written like a story rather than written like a history text. Um, plus, it's just interesting. This one, sadly, does not end as happily as the last Aww. one did. Um, but we are still um, under the, like, the demon panic. Um, this chapter, chapter two, which is what we're going to be going over today, is the trial of the North Berwick witches. A king delights in demonology. That king happens to be King James of Scotland. Um, but let's go back just a little bit. Um, so last one, we met the guy who wrote Malleus Maleficarum, um, which I'm probably saying that horrendously with a really Midwest accent and I apologize, but this is just who I am as a person. So you're welcome. Um, and in the last chapter, we also talked about how the Protestants and the Catholics were not getting along. Um, and this conflict starts to get worse. Um, and as it gets worse, so does interest in demonology and um, witchcraft accusations. So ironically, even though they were very like against each other and had different beliefs, the witch trials in Catholic communities and Protestant communities were very similar. Um, because they both were like, it's all or nothing. You're either a witch or you're not. There's no in-between. There's no gray area. Um, the biggest difference is that in Protestant areas, there are no monks. So there are no monastic inquisitors. Um, there's no Heinrich Kramer, basically. Instead, um, kings, dukes, um, royal officials took on that role. In this specific case... That person is the Protestant king, James the Sixth of Scotland. Um, he has a romance, romance, I use that term very lightly, happening. And um, there are issues from the very start. It's not a good start. Um, and he, you know witchcraft it's what the witches are after them so in the summer of 1589 there was a marriage um like contract it they literally used the word brokered in the book like it was not a love match between king james of scotland and anna who was the daughter of the danish norwegian king frederick ii at the time denmark and norway were one country or kingdom <laughs> Um, this was supposed to help um, calm down the political turmoil in Scotland because King James became king when he was like eight months old or something like that. So now he's about 23 years old and that he's having this marriage to help calm down the crazy political climate that's happening. Um, but at age 23... Um, he has an intense, intense attachment to his male friends. He avoids women and has no heir. Um, his enemies are like, yeah, he's going to die, die childless. We're going to be able to take over. Basically, he was gay, but he had to get married to produce an heir. Um, so he does all this by like writing and correspondence and sets up this marriage to this woman he's never met. Um, he did not plan to go get her and bring her home. He was just like, you know what? Well, you, I'll pay for you to come here, but I'm not coming to get you. Um, 
but they're getting married, quote, by proxy. So they're getting married even though they're not in the same spot. So on paper, they're married, but they're not together yet. I, weird as fuck. Um, and then once they're married by proxy, she's going to sail to Scotland. However, that did not quite work out because fucking witches. God damn it. Um, yeah, so <laughs> just hot mess. So they are, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to skip back a little bit to give a little bit of history of um, Denmark and Austria and Scotland and how demonology is happening. So Denmark is also um, Protestant and they are like, we're going to prosecute these witches. We're going to quote, godly people should hunt witches down like wolves. Um, and they, they would do like sting operations basically where they would hire women or people, but women, um, for their magical abilities as like di for divination or for healing. Um, and then when they showed up to do this job, they would immediately arrest them and take them to the gallows to be burned and well hung and burned. Cause you know, fair, totally fair. Um, which let me preface that or not preface, I guess, since I'm saying it afterwards, but let me clarify. I do think sting operations are a good thing when they are for like child molesters or drug smugglers or weapons deals. Like I, stings can be a good thing. Stings in this case for witches who were not, witches who were not doing anything to hurt anyone. Like fuck y'all. Okay. So just so we're clear. Um, so because of all of that, or that that's the, the setting where Anna or Anna is. So while sailing to Scotland, um, the Queen's fleet of ships is driven off course. And she is basically blown into Denmark's, I'm going to say this wrong, and I apologize to any, um, <laughs> any people, um, Skagerrak Strait. That is such a, I have no, first of all, I have no idea how to say that correctly, but I can just hear the Midwest in your. Yeah. I know I'm saying it wrong. I know it's awful. It's probably like Skagarik or something like that, but I'm like Skagarak. Um, <laughs> so anyway. Skagarak. Yeah. Well, let me just throw this out there. Before I knew that Bazgayath was Bazgayath, in my head, I was saying Bazgiath. So like. Just oh, actually, did you did you see my TikTok? Uh, probably. Unless you sent it today. No, I didn't. So, sorry, I don't mean to. I should have said this when we were actually talking about that episode. But there's actually I sent a TikTok, and it's actually a Gaelic speaker who was actually pronouncing. Oh yeah. The words correctly. Yeah. I'll put a note in our thing to talk about it when we get to it. So go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, Skagarak. Um, <laughs> that's where the queen is. Queen Anna. Um, and her ship is leaking. So they've, they've tried six times to leave the Skagarak straight. Um, now I'm saying it on purpose. I hope you realize that. <laughs> um, and now her ship, her ship is leaking. So like, Jesus Christ, by the way, Anna's 14. Just so we're clear. She's 14. Um, she's middle-aged in that time. Right? She's old as fuck. She might as well. She's about to die. She's going to have one baby and die. <laughs> she's too old. For um, so that. James over here has been like preparing for his wife's arrival for months. And he's not necessarily excited because he's gay. But like he's. This is embarrassing, right? That his wife is taking so long to get here. So he's pissed. So he decides he's just going to appoint caretakers to run Scotland and he's going to go get his wife. Um, I feel like that's so, not a good idea, but okay. Yeah, this is going to be even worse. So James then decides to sail to Fleckyford. 
Fleckefjord, Fleckefjord, um, which is near Stavanger, and he travels over land to get to Anna, um, and they are now married in person. Emily is fucking dying right now. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to mute myself. <laughs> All right. The fuck you, Ford. The fuck you, Ford. Ugh. Well, the end of it is Fjord. And the beginning. Fleck of Fjord. Fleck of Fjord. I don't know. Um. Anyway, they get married in person in Oslo, Denmark. And then they spend Christmas there. Actually, they spend Christmas at her brother's court. King Christian the Fourth of Denmark, Norway, um, and it's there that these rumors and stories and like happenings start about witches having attacked the royal family, specifically Anna and her ships. So that summer, of fifteen ninety, Anna Coldings, Karen Wilfers. Marin Max Briggers, Marin Mogenesis, and at least eight other people who are unnamed in the court proceedings are um, put on trial in Copenhagen. Not the witches. The witches. Um, they were accused of causing sea storms that afflicted Anna's fleet of ships. And um, they had done it by sending demons floating out in barrels. They put demons in barrels and sent them floating out into the ocean. Um, oh. So oh. for the rest of, by the way, it's storm season. It's just so you know, because Anna decides yeah. they're going to wait yeah. to ship to sail to, to Scotland okay. because it's storm season. So it's storm season and the ships. Because women use their brain a lot more. Oh my god. So sh she's like, we're going to stay in Norway until the the storm season is over. You know, the storm season that, that ran my ships into land and made my ship leak. That storm season that we're blending on witches. We're going to stay in Norway till that's over. Um, and so they go home in May after the stone, storm season is over. However, this ocean crossing is also interrupted by foul weather. Um, and since it is no longer storm season, now both royal families, Scotland and Denmark, Norway, are convinced that witches are trying to murder them. So now we have two witch trials happening, one in Denmark, Norway, and one in Scotland. Um, and they're happening at the same time. And King James is leading the investigations in Scotland. He is described as a flamboyant Protestant princeling in his 20s, which yes, is pretty King. accurate based on what I've read about him, <laughs> right? <laughs> Except, like, not in this time. So, like, maybe don't. <laughs> this 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 time, I like, wait, it's wait, shocking wait. to me that he's not the one on trial for being gay, I, but whatever. Can I, can I tell you something? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to a coworker's house for this wonderful outdoor heat mosquito infested party that they were having. And that we're <laughs> look at my welts. <laughs> um and we were driving down a road and I look over and I just see a Trump flag and I was like Bleh. <laughs> And Will looks and he goes, Yeah, that's disturbing and I was like they live in a an apartment complex called Flower Town. <laughs> and he goes, wouldn't it be funny if it was called like Pride Tower or something like that? And I was like, I just want to go buy the thing and go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we started thinking about like all the names that we could have named it, like Criminal Avenue or Sleepy Time. Felonia. or little hands there's a lot of like first name like names down here like there's an emily drive 
So I was like, Joseph Avenue, Joseph Boulevard. <laughs> I was like, but nothing beats that. Yes. With a like a firm snap, like right in front of yes. it. Yes. At Flower Town. I love that. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, so James about himself, right? Thinks he believes that kings are divinely appointed and therefore they are closer to God than most other humans. Oh. Lupin said, no, the fuck you ain't. Brittany's home. <laughs> so Lupin said, fuck off. Lupin. Lupin, shut the fuck up. Yeah, shut the fuck up, bitch. Um, and even though he believed he was divinely appointed. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> he feels like justice is the most important attribute of a king, of kingship. Uh, I will go ahead and put a warning on Buzzsprout for that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Oi. <laughs> um so uh Hein or like Heinrich in the last episode, James has a lot of concern about female power. Um, you know, he's gay, so he's got a lot of concerns about female power. Um and when he was younger, um his mom was Mary Queen of Scots. So if you don't know about oh. Mary Queen of Scots, <laughs> she was forced from her throne after being accused of complicity in murdering her husband. Um, and th then she marries, after murdering her husband, she marries the chief suspect in that murder. Um, and that's why baby James was um, crowned at like, I think he was maybe 18 months or something like that. So he has mommy issues. He's gay. He's scared of women. Okay. Like he, he has, at the very least, he has some, some reservations about women. Um, so he, oh, and his neighbor right now is Queen, um, Queen Elizabeth of England, who is like, who, who executed his mother. So, like, he's surrounded by these powerful women who have done, like, kind of horrific things in his life. Um, so he's, you know, he's not got the best view of women right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, in his mind, there's this conspiracy of witches, hundreds of witches, that are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with kings. They're taking down the, the monarchies, Okay. Um, and this starts with, in Scotland anyway, with suspicions about two women that are kind of associated with the royal court. Um, but like they're both, neither of them are like noble in any way. Um, and I mean that in like the royal sense, not in the Gryffindor sense. Um, so these two women are both magical healers. One of them, Jillis, she's, she goes by Jilly, so that's what I'm going to call her, and Agnes. Jillis Duncan and Agnes Sampson. Um, Jilly is a maidservant of David Seaton, who is the, t the state magistrate. Um, she also, though, like, she was a maidservant by day, but at night she was a healer. She would make potions. She would make... Um, some people said she made curses, but nobody said that until after her trial started. So like, meh. But during her confession, she says that she um, walked up the hill from the King's Fjord on the Sleepy River-esque to gather a broad-leaved grass. Um, and basically she used that in her healing but they're saying that this was like ungodly magic um and they like we said in the last one 
said that her cures and healings were most miraculous and miracles are just for God, not for women. So when women are performing miracles, that's a problem. Red flag alert. So they question her, torture, torture her unofficially and illegally with thumb screws. So like, fuck her life. Um, she confesses, obviously. I feel like I would confess if you were using thumb screws on me. Okay. Um, and they wanted to find out what she did, which she confesses to um, using ungodly magic and doing curses. And she says that she worked with Ag Agnes Sampson, who was by Annie. Um, they also... Um, blah, blah, blah. they were already suspecting her because she had more influential patients um, in the nobility and she was suspected because she had tried to help the wife and daughters of a wealthy gentleman named Patrick Edmonston who had reported attack by a supernatural black dog I use quotations around that because they refer to it as a demonic spirit. Um, however, it's also described in the book. Um, they, they use the word um, representation of anxiety or depression. So like, was it a demonic spirit or was it like, this is just how they described it. Um. Annie, though, confesses and says that she commanded the devil dog to reveal whether her patients would live or die. And she was told that Lady Edmiston would die, but at least two of her daughters would survive. Um, later, Annie saves two of these daughters um, from drowning. And she says that she did this with the healing power of prayer. So, I don't know. Um, Annie, in her head, is using prayer and, um, like, traditional methods to heal and save people. So, in her mind, she's, like, fully Christian. And she, everything she's doing, she's doing out of, like, Christian goodness. Um, but, you know, satanic panic. That won't be a thing till like, the 80s. But it's kind of a thing here. Um, she uses prayers like Ave Maria. She does like all these different things. Um, but when she and Jilly Duncan were questioned, both admitted separately that Annie interfered in royal affairs. Like she collaborated with witches from Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, and they had worked towards stopping the the queen from coming home. So separately questioned, they both admitted this. Um, and this caught King James's attention because this has all been done by David Seaton, who was Jilly's boss. This caught King James's attention. So now they're coming to Edinburgh to be tried. Um, Annie, this is like trigger warning for this one. Um, to all of the hair is shaved off her body by state jailers so she can be um, examined for demonic marks. Her head was then thrown with a rope, quote, which means that, you know, that those TikToks where they put the rubber bands around the watermelon till it explodes? That's what they did to her head, but with rope. Um, she held out about an hour without confessing. Um, mind you, she still got her head wrapped in rope like a fucking exploding watermelon. And then they decide they're going to search her, quote, privities. Her vagina and her butt. They're going to search those for right. marks. And they supposedly find one. Supposedly, they find one there. Um, 
And after, you know, torture and sexual assault, she finally um, breaks and confesses. After these trials are over, several of these, quote, witches withdraw their admissions of guilt and other statements. Um, they say that they gave false and feigned evidence because they were in fear of their lives and in torment. Huh. That's odd. Um, so this is all happening. Um, and then something crazy happens. So Jilly has given all this evidence against Annie, right? She said that Annie is going to, um, Annie's, Annie's stopping the queen from coming. And the king is like, what the hell's going on? Annie told him that she asked the devil if he should have any kids. Um, and to prove that he was present on their wedding night in Norway, which she was not, she was in Scotland, but to prove that she was there, she whispers, Annie whispers into James's ear, the very words that the king had said to his new wife on that date. Now, those words were not said in private. They were said in like a public area with servants and, um, potentially other people within hearing distance. So it's likely that they were overheard and repeated and she was just repeating them. But to him, that was proof. Unlike last time's last month's story about Helen Schubrin, who, where she was like a well-connected, well-respected light and beloved woman of the city. Annie and Jilly are poor and uneducated, they're servants, and they're used to just agreeing with whatever the nobility says, because that's what keeps them safest. So um, they just agree with whatever they say. Um, Jesus, Jilly. Annie says that the devil came to her when she was widowed and offered her money to accept him as her master. Um, these stories as you can tell, keep getting wilder and wilder and wilder. Um, finally, in, in 1591, they confessed to creating a sea storm that had the one that had afflicted James and Anna in 1589 um, through a Danish Scottish witch alliance. So they've, they've basically confessed to everything. Um, then they are hustled back to prison at Holyrood House um, with a huge number of other suspects. By Christmas of 1590, this outline of like a conspiracy is huge. And they, James and his officials, King James and his officials are like obsessed with this story. Um, and now they're going back and like checking the stories against demonology and trying to weed out any contradictions in the stories. And um, they didn't do a very great job of this because they wanted to be right. They wanted to punish someone. Um, now things start to get a little more crazy. Um, Barbara Napier, who is a gentlewoman, um, is accused of using Annie's magic to help her husband and to gain favor with courtiers. She bought from Annie an anti-morning sickness charm for Lady Angus and an enchanted ring that and had killed the Earl of Angus, it was said, using a wax image, like a voodoo doll type thing. Um, so now Barbara Napier is also in on the list. A noblewoman, Euphen McCalfian, who goes by Effie, is accused of bewitching her own husband and father-in-law um, and consulting with witches about her family's health. Effie had her labor pains um, eased by scattering charms around her bed, a hagstone, a written charm, and magic totems. 
And then Annie helped Effie seduce a local laird. I'm not sure what that is. I should have looked that up, but I didn't. Um, so both Effie. A laird, you said? Yeah, L-A-I-R-D. I don't, I don't know. I'm assuming like Lord, but I don't know. So now both Effie and Barbara Napier are also on trial. It's a Scottish title usually reserved for those who own larger estates in Scot Scotland. Okay. It's so kind of like lady. Lord. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. So yes, she, Annie helps Effie seduce a local Lord, but in there they call it the Laird. Um, so they're both on trial now as well. Now we have some influential people joining the trial, but it's too late and you're going up against the king. So it doesn't really matter how influential you are. Um, Effie's family employs lawyers, but the king is running the trial. So it continues at the end of her trial on January 27th, 1591, Annie was found guilty. Um, Annie was taken to Edinburgh castle and imprisoned until a stake and a pyre of dry wood could be built by the stake, she was strangled and her dead body was dumped onto the pyre and burned to ashes. J Jilly Duncan at this time is still being questioned. And another woman is being tried alongside her, Bessie Thompson, who happens to be Annie Sampson's daughter. Um, the Trinit schoolmaster, John Fionn, is also being charged alongside them. So this is the first male being charged. He was said to have officiated with Satan at the North Berwick church convention. Um, and as the few, one of the few literal literate people in his community, he took notes at this convention with Satan and he was accused of doing magic tricks and telling fortunes. His punishment was a little more horrifying. Um, so, trigger warning, he was tortured with hammers and metal leggings before being executed. I do not know how he was executed. Um, but one could imagine that it was blood loss <laughs> at that point. Um, Jilly Duncan and Bessie Thompson were executed side by side on Castle Hill on December 4th, 1591. Barbara Napier was acquitted by her jury, but... Then the king was like, oh, you're going to acquit her? Well, now you're on trial. Um, and they were like, just kidding. She's guilty. Barbara escaped immediate execution because she was pregnant. And then she disappears from history. So fingers crossed that Barbara Napier got away. Because um, there's no record of her execution. Effie McCalsian was burned alive on Ju June 15th, 1591. Um, this was... An a worse punishment in their mind because she wasn't murdered and then burned. She was burned alive um, because she was an undutiful wife, a witch who tried to murder her husband and father-in-law and she magically seduced another man. So basically she embarrassed them. And so they felt like she needed to be punished more harshly. Um, all of this is, wild um but oh and then king james decides to write his own demonology book simply called demonology um, except for spelled the scottish way like d-a-e-m-o-n um instead of demon um so the Earl of um, the Earl of Bothwell hasn't really been mentioned much until now. He was named by multiple of the accused and executed witches as the instigator of their attack on the king and queen. Um, so he's kind of like the one who paid the hitman. <laughs> he fled Scotland in 1591 while these witches were on trial. He waited a few years and came back once the climate had eased a little bit. You know, the executions are done. The mania has kind of gone away. Trials are over. He comes back in 1593 and was formally tried. The Earl was accused of consulting wishes. Um, 
and asking how to cut away or kill the king by using a wax image, shipwreck, or poison. Um, you know, surely he's going to be convicted and terribly punished too, right? No. He's a he, male. He is a man, a nobleman, a king's courtier. Happen. Yeah, he had legal advice, the backing of fellow nobles. With James's consolidation of his power, the political mood had also changed and chilled out a little bit. So the Earl of Bothwell was acquitted. Shocker. <laughs> that is the end. So there was a male punished in this one, though. Um, the schoolmaster, John Fionn, was, was executed and tortured with hammers and metal leggings. But the nobleman was not. And according to everyone in the, the story, he was the one who instigated the whole thing. So that seems wild to me. But, you know, I, I don't make the rules in, in Scotland and Norway in the 1500s. I'm just here. <laughs> yeah. I was not even a sparkle in anyone's eye in the 1500s. You were a sparkle in my eye. <laughs> Just so you were aware. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that is the North Berwick trials. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I really enjoy this book. Like I'm really enjoying this series of like history of the witch trials. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's honestly pretty cool to like I know I didn't like talk much, but it's we have a friend coming from michigan and trying to figure out his location and figure out what the fuck is going on yeah it's about time for him to get there so bitch he ain't gonna be here for another hour and a half oh shit i thought you said nine <laughs> he was he was technically supposed to be here by eight and then he was like nine and now it's fucking ten and i'm like i just want to go to bed <laughs> well we got to bed <laughs> i know technically it's will's friend not mine <laughs> yeah, you could go to bed yeah. Good night. Right. Have fun. <laughs> Anyways, until next time. Bye.